But actually, what's very important to know is that there are four types of learners that you need to know. And so, you know, sitting in pairs in rows facing the front, it doesn't suit everyone, of course. I don't know about you. I like, to, if I, I've written lots of books and done lots of things, I like to be on my own, doors closed, you know, having some quiet music playing in the corner, my cat sitting over there, and I just like to get into it. And if someone disturbs me, then I'm out. Oh, I've lost it. You know, when I'm in the flow, I'm in the flow. And you need to know what types of learners sit in your class. And the, the way that you do that is you, you do something called the prepared environment where there are four types of learners. There's an independent learner. They want to work on their own. They want to sit on their own. They don't want to talk. They don't want to communicate with someone. They want to come in, work hard, and go home. And they're actually, they're, as an adult, you also have these same traits. And then there's something called a parallel learner. Two students who work together. They're best buddies. They want to talk and chat, but they're not necessarily at the same academic level. So they use each other as a buffer. Hey, do you like my picture? I love your picture of a tortoise. Do you like my calculation? I think you've got the denominator wrong in that one. Oh, thanks for the help. And they just, they love to buffer each other and assist each other, but they're working on something completely different. It's like you or I, you know, together going to, you know, one of these remote working offices, you're building a website and I'm, you know, writing a new script for a play. But we're there together, we're having coffee and every few minutes we check in, how's it going? Good, here's it going with you. By the way, how's it going with your girlfriend at home? Pretty good, yeah. And back to the work. Those are those kids. And then you have these cooperative learners and cooperative learners are learners who sit together in pairs, same academic level. They do the same thing at the same time. They grab the same piece of paper, the same, same color, same word, the same time, lacking confidence. The other person, if they both do it together, it doesn't matter if they get it wrong, it's two of them to get it wrong, rather than one person getting it wrong on their own. And then you've got the last one, which is a collaborative learner, which is a big team, and it has a ringleader, and all the guys in the team are feeling really lost and don't have any navigation or independence, and the ringleader says, all right, guys, today we're going to build the volcano. Now, Thomas, you're going to go get the papier mache paper, you're going to get the glue, you get the toilet rolls, you get the card, come back in two minutes, we're going to start, and they, they bring it together now. The reason I tell you those four types of learners is, from a teaching perspective, and go back to your question, can you cater for everyone? Of course you can. You just need those spaces available. So tables on their own, facing a wall. Those, those independent learners, they do not want stimulation. If you face them into the class, they're like, wow, look at all, the, look what he's doing, look at the window. You know, they're just, everything's amazing and they get nothing done. But if you just sit them down and let them, you don't tell them where to sit. You just set up the space and you say you can sit where you want and the kids just go to what suits them as you would and you just watch and you take notes saying oh little tommy he's an independent learner yep stephanie and uh, thomas oh they're parallel learners look at them yep they're doing that and you know that and when you know that you know your students and when you know your students boom everyone's catered for